Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today's video is a reading vlog for the first book in the Zodiac Academy, The Awakening. So if you haven't heard of it yet, the Zodiac Academy has been kind of blowing up on TikTok. Me and Izzy from Happy For Now, who's my co-host on the romance portion of Chapter 3 podcast, decided, hey, let's read this, see what all the hype is about, if we think it's actually worth the hype or why it's got all this hype and do a podcast episode about it. So that's what we're doing. We're recording the podcast episode later this week, but I thought it might be interesting to do a reading vlog and kind of take you guys with me through my day as I'm reading this. I should pretty easily be able to finish it all in one day. I'm already a little ways into it. I couldn't do an intro earlier this morning, but I did start the book before going to my kid's school for a second greater concert, which was adorable. And then, because today is May 4th, may the 4th be with you, uh, it is it is Star Wars Day, so I am appropriately attired, and when I found out that my favorite donut shop, The Donut Project, was doing blue milk donuts, you know I had to go and get one and take a picture. So I have tried it, it's pretty good. But let's talk about The Awakening. So far I am 20% of the way into the book, and it is hella tropey and there is a lot going on in this world. I do feel like this is the sort of thing where you have to just kind of really suspend disbelief and not worry too much about whether things make sense. So for anybody who somehow managed to not hear about Zodiac Academy yet, it's it's got a lot going on. It's sort of this fey paranormal mashup fantasy romance, kinda, but it's a bully romance which I'll be honest, I sort of hate the concept of, but I'm reading it for the podcast. So do I think that this book is necessarily going to be my thing because of that element? Maybe not. Although I do really like magical school stories. So if there was anything that was making me curious to try the series, that's probably it. So we're following these two twin sisters who were orphaned at a fairly young age, raised in foster care, have just turned 18 and are now out on their own and trying to figure out how they're going to make ends meet. When all of a sudden they are accosted by this muscly guy who can somehow compel them using his voice to like sit down and listen and let him into their apartment, which is super creepy hella creepy. But he says, I've been chasing you all day. And it turns out that you are not actually human. You are fey and you're changelings. And if you want to claim your inheritance, you have to come with me to the fey world and go to the school called the Zodiac Academy. If you go there and you graduate, you can claim your inheritance. And that's all he tells them. And they're like, uh, well, we have no money and you're telling us room and board is going to be paid for. So sure, let's do that. Now, what's funny is they're surprisingly not all that bothered by the concept of Faye existing in the world. They're kind of like, wait, what? Oh, okay, but you're going to feed us and there might be money in it. Sure, let's do that. <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah, sure. So they get to the school, the Zodiac Academy. So as it turns out, this dude who had told him he was a professor at the school didn't give them the full story. They find out that not only were they fey changelings, but that their fey parents were actually the very last king and queen of the fey realm. They were fey royalty, which of course makes these down on their luck twin sisters princesses. But not only that, they enter into a world where everybody has at least one of four elemental abilities, earth, fire, air, and water, and most people only have one. It's really, really rare to have two. And, and so, of course, you'll not be shocked to hear that the twin sisters both have all four elemental abilities, which is unheard of. So this book is like the most chosen one of chosen one tropes, the most not like other girls of not like other girls tropes, which we get into later because so far there's been one other peer female character who's been introduced and she is your very stereotypical sort of ditzy possessive girlfriend of the hot guy or one of the hot guys. So this this is gonna go real well. But as it also turns out, these twin sisters are not only walking into the potential inheritance of the throne, 
if they manage to survive and graduate Zodiac Academy, which is sort of like magic college, and prove their abilities. But also they're walking into a political mess because since everybody for the last 18 years had thought that the royal line was dead, the four leading sort of noble fae families have been sharing power between them. And y'all know how power hungry people are. Do they want to give up their ruling powers to these lost princesses who grew up in the human world? No, of course they don't. Are all four of their male heirs at the Zodiac Academy and heading up each of the four elemental houses? Yes. <laughs> and of course they're all described as like super hot and attractive, even though they're complete assholes to the princesses and engage in bullying and hazing things while the, the principal and the teachers stand on and watch as if this is perfectly fine and acceptable and normal. So that is where we're at. Oh, but wait, there is one other twist <laughs> that, that was just revealed. Because, you know, it wasn't enough to have fey and magic powers and this magical school and everything. We also need to add in all of the other paranormal creatures. So in this world, fey are not just fey, they develop into four subcategories of fey. I don't remember what the fourth one is, but but they're like vampires, werewolves, sirens, and something else. I don't remember what the fourth one is. It'll probably come up at some point. But we've met a fey vampire, and vampires can like suck the magic out of people. So so that's fun. Um, so there's a lot, a lot going on <laughs> in this world. Is it very tropey? Yes. Is it kind of absurd? Also, yes, but I'm kind of going with it. I suspect that this is gonna be one of those awful things where these hot guys who are total jerks to these girls are gonna put them through hell, but they're gonna still be attracted to them. But at least the girls are standing up for themselves. I like that. They're kind of like, well, you can't make me do anything. And oh, you think I can't do that? Watch me. So it's that sort of like, not like other girls version of girl powered, but with asshole guys who are gonna end up being the love interests, which, why, why? Anyway, that's where we're at. We're 20% of the way in. Like, it's not good, but so far I'm not hating it. It may eventually make me angry. Right now I just think it's kind of absurd, but to some extent I can just like, enjoy it for what it is, that may change. So I have the audiobook downloaded and I have this shelf that I just bought for kitchen organization that I need to put together. So I'm thinking I'm going to put in my headphones and listen to the audiobook while I put that shelf together. And if I can get the camera managed in an appropriate way, maybe I'll do a time lapse so you can see me put it together and get my kitchen a little bit more organized. And then I will check back in and let you know how things go. Where we are right now, the girls were forcibly separated. They had to choose different houses. So one of them chose air and she's now, you know, gone through and is in air. The other girl chose fire, which is supposedly the darkest and most dangerous thing. And she is currently like walking over hot coals and lava and like, I don't know, like doing things that she has to do to get into the house. So that's where we're at. called Faybook. This is so absurd. And it's a mirror world. So there's like all the same races and stuff. This is, this is very interesting. This is 
so much better than what we had before, more space. Figuring out organization in a New York City apartment is always a challenge. Update on Zodiac Academy. One of the twins is thinking one of the professors is hot, but of course he's also kind of a jerk. So there's that. And I, I don't know, there's just a lot going on. The writing isn't great. Like they have a Latinx character say, yeah, the school is muy clicky. <laughs> like what? <laughs> okay. Um, what? I don't, I don't know. It's a lot. Also, I was wrong. There aren't only four beings that people can be. There's like a bunch of them. They can turn into like Pegasus or a unicorn or like basically any mythological creature you can think of exists in this world and like some of the fae can turn into them. So it's a lot. And so far all the girls suck. I mean, to be fair, like most people except for Diego, this one like Latinx guy sucks. He seems nice, but is he going to be a love interest? No, probably not because he's not a jerk. Because uh, apparently we like the jerks here. But yeah, all the girls are pretty awful. And um, yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, it's kind of dumb. I'll keep listening. Okay, maybe I sort of hate this. There's a pro, the, the supposedly hot professor, Orion, helped her and was like, well, now in return, you know what I want, because he's a vampire. He wants to like suck her magic. And she's like, no, don't bite me and fights him. And he does it anyway. And it, it like reads like essay. You know, um, I mean, technically that's not what it is, but still like the power dynamics and consent stuff. And it's setting up this world where it's like, this is a world where everyone takes what they want and it's about how powerful you are. So you just better get with it. And I'm like, gross, gross. Also, everyone's awful to them and like compelling them to do things that are embarrassing or harmful. I just, ugh, ugh, yeah, hmm. <sighs> my going with itness is quickly evaporating. <laughs> okay, so I am about 60% of the way through the book and <laughs> I don't know. It's just really dumb. I don't care much about anything that's happening. I don't understand why they're still attracted to all of these people who are awful to them and using them and bullying them like I don't I just don't get it there's also this group of girls who are sort of like fangirl types who are really excited about the, them being princesses and they're also written as being super irritating I don't know it just feels like it's taking this not like other girls trope to an extreme and I and and like the world building is just all over the place. Like every mythological creature you can think of, plus they use, you know, obviously it's called Zodiac Academy. So there's astrology that plays a role. They do tarot readings, they do palm readings, all these different kinds of magic. Like it's just, it feels sort of like everything in the kitchen sink, right? Like they just came up with everything they could possibly think of that was remotely paranormal and threw it all into one thing. And, you know, like, I do tend to like this whole thing of a magical school. There's a world in which this could have been done in a way that I would actually enjoy. But I just, like, I don't, it's not good. Like, the writing's not very good. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. And I hate that the teachers are predatory and possibly people want to kill them, maybe, but they're not sure. I don't know. I just, yeah. Anyway, I'll keep, I'll keep reading. Okay, I am 70% of the way through. Kind of having the same feelings. Like, why are you dancing with and attracted to people that have been awful to you and bullied you? Like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, you have this perfectly nice friend that apparently you have zero attraction to you, but all of these awful alpha bullies are the thing. I don't... I know this is the trope. I knew it was a bully romance, but like, I just, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> like, if this works for you, great. But I'm like, it's 
toxic as hell and I don't understand why why but uh yeah also I like the professors are all creepy because there's one that they're not attracted to who's kind of a perv and then there's the one that they are who's also a creep but they don't mind it as much because he's not as old and attractive it's gross. Like, the power dynamic stuff is really gross. There's a lot of magical lack of consent throughout. So there's that. Um, not sexual at this point, but like things that feel like a stand-in for sexual stuff. Although I'm sure there's going to be more sexual stuff coming soon or at some point as well. Also, if you hear me saying the one twin and the other twin, it's because... You can't really differentiate <laughs> between them. I don't I don't feel like either of them have really distinct narrative voices or characters. So they, you know, they're kind of interchangeable. Uh, the the other thing about this that I find interesting is there's been a couple times where other people have been like, "Oh, twins." make out with each other and try to like magically compel them to do that and then in the twins head they're like why do people think that that's okay uh, thankfully someone intervened before we did this vile thing <laughs> like oh everything else you're doing is fine but this is vile but we're still gonna like hint at it because i don't know i just i mean it is vile it is like i mean it's incest it's gross but uh yeah i don't I don't know. This book is, is interesting. So yeah, I've got 30% left. I'll check back in once I've made some more progress. It, yeah. I just finished. I've got to leave to go pick up my kids from their after school activities. But yeah, like it didn't get better. Th this is the thing. I think there is a way to have a bad boy hero who starts out bad and then you end up really being into him and do it well. Like I think Vampire Diaries is a good example of that. This just doesn't do it well. So I feel like unless you're into this sort of thing, which I guess is for some people a thing of like people being mean to you, <laughs> like finding that hot, um, th this just doesn't, I don't, I don't know. And it's not written well, there's way too much going on in the story and all these side plots and like, I did not like it. Um, so is it worth the hype? Personally, I would say no, unless this is just your particular thing that you're into in books. If you like this kind of thing, then then maybe, although I wouldn't say it's particularly well written. Uh, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't get it, y'all. I do not get it. Uh, will I be continuing on with the rest of the series? No, no, not my thing. I, I'm just, I'm really not the audience for this. Like I can see a world in which people where this is not their favorite type of relationship dynamic might enjoy it more than I did, but this is not my deal, uh, which I kind of knew going in, it may not be, but I, I was like, well, let's give it a try. No. All the girls suck except for the twins, but they're not really that great either. And they're not into the people who are actually nice to them. And the <laughs> the world is the world and the magic is super convoluted. A lot of things don't really make sense. I no. I would say no. So if this vlog makes you think, ooh, that sounds like something I'd be into, maybe you are the audience for it. Otherwise, I would say skip it. So <laughs> Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Have you read it? Did you like it? Did you not? Why do you think this is having such a moment on the internet? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, it does help if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time.